Okay, so kind of ready for this talk. This is going to be a little bit about sharing some different things to kind of put things in perspective. <laughs> ready? Welcome to A Mountain. Uh, the mountain behind us is a 2,900 foot mountain that was used by the Indians in the 15th and the 16th century as a lookout to make sure that when the enemy came approaching into the valley they could warn all of their people that the enemy was coming in by sending up the smoke signals. So the first word that they called this was Signal Mountain and then later it became known as Sentinel Peak. The University of Arizona put this letter A here in 1915 and it was constructed by the students at the university which is on the other side of Tucson. You can see a lot of the red buildings in the background back there and there's between 35 and 40,000 students that go there. What I would like to do is take this opportunity to share some of the things that took place in the city of Tucson and the surrounding area. Now on tape, Brother Bantam talks about Sunset Mountain. Sunset Mountain is 40 miles northeast of here. And, and to get there, to, uh, you know, in a straight arrow, you'd have to fly there because you can't drive in a straight line to go to Sunset. The way we went the other day is one of the best ways to go and to get to Sunset. So what I'd like to do is start back in when Brother Bantam moved here in 1963. When Brother Branham moved here, he moved here because of a vision that he had had of stakes being driven down next to his house on Ewing Lane in Jeffersonville. And when he saw those, he asked Brother Banks what they were getting ready to do. And he said, they're getting ready to widen the road. And when they do, they're going to take out this wing that you had built for your entryway to your driveway. He said, is there any way you can remove it? Brother Banks tried to remove this entryway that was made out of rocks just like this is made out of rocks right here and he started working on it with a sledgehammer and he worked for a couple of hours and got one stone out he said brother Bannon he said this is going to take me a long time he said maybe we should wait and try another method brother Bannon said just a minute he said I think I remember a story about this so he went and got his vision book and in the vision book he says there was a young man on a tractor and this young man was running up into his yard tearing everything up and he asked the young man in the vision now he asked the young man don't do that you know this is my yard you know can't you respect my property and the boy smarted off to brother Branham and brother Branham in the vision he hit this boy knocked him down picked him back up and said you have no right to talk to me that way and the boy smarted off again and brother Branham said I hit him again now, when this happened, in the vision, the Holy Spirit spoke to Brother Bantam and said, when, you, when this happens, bypass this and move to Tucson. Or excuse me, move to Arizona. When he came to Arizona, he went to Phoenix first. They didn't like it up there, so they came to Sabino Canyon. They really liked Sabino Canyon, thought it was very beautiful because Brother Gene Norman, Fred Softman, uh, a lot of different brothers that had lived here in Tucson, tried to get him to come here so he wound up renting a house here in Tucson so the second week of January 1963 they moved into a small house and rented it from a family in the meantime brother Branham took sister Mita back to Sabino Canyon where he parked at the top it's 3.8 miles from the bottom to the top of the canyon where they had built this road between 1933 and 1937 they parked the car Brother Branham gets out of the car, goes to the restroom, walks up a game trail, and was gone for several hours. On his way back, Brother Branham is excited. He's very happy. Sister Branham says, Bill, what's the matter? And he says, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. Well, in the message serves as this the time, Brother Branham has a vision of an explosion taking place in his life after he reaches down to take a cocklebur out of his trouser legs. He said no man could survive that blast. And when the Holy Spirit finally showed him that it was the furtherance of his ministry, we realized later when he preaches the message, God in simplicity and the breach, that Brother Branham, when he left Sister Media in the car, he had gone up to ask the Lord what to do, what's going on, 
what do you want me to do? I have a home in Jeffersonville that's paid for. I already have a church to go to. Why am I here? And the Holy Spirit, he said, I was either in a trance or a vision. He said, all I know is I was praising the Lord and a sword struck my hand. And of course we know that he, brother, that the Lord said it was the king's sword. And I don't have to relate that because you can hear all that on tape. So this is one of the first things that we know of that took place in this city. Sabino Canyon, if you look straight across downtown Tucson, Sabino Canyon is exactly in a straight line from here to Sabino. So when you're in Sabino and you look out the mouth of the canyon, you're looking right at A Mountain. And you can see the letter A all the way from Sabino. The next thing that we know that happened here, of course, I'm going to exclude the things that happened at sunset. But the next thing that we know that happened here was that Brother Branham was up in the mountains and he was praying one morning. And he had gone up there and there was a cloud that appeared over those mountains about halfway that you can see back over here. It's a place that we call Finger Rock. And there was an amber colored cloud that went up and down three times. And Brother Branham talks about this on tape. Now remember, this is around February of 1965. From here, we realize Brother Branham got his commission to preach marriage and divorce. He goes back to Jeffersonville and preaches in Parkview Junior High School. And that's where he preached a series of messages of which one of them was marriage and divorce. The next event that takes place is Brother Branham is here with Brother Perry Green. Brother Perry Green has come to Tucson in October of 1965. He's looking for a building because Brother Branham had asked him to come start a church here. While he's here, Brother Green finally finds a building. He has Brother George Smith with him and his little daughter, Tina. Tina's a very young girl at that time. When they go to the front porch of where Brother Branham lives on North Park, Brother Branham is sitting down in a chair. And Brother Branham holds his arms open to Tina, and being a young girl, she ran and jumped in Brother Branham's arms. And Brother Branham puts little Tina on his knee and starts singing, I'm too small to fly, or the enemy shoot the art. You know, you know the kids' song that kids sing in Sunday school. And then he looks up at Brother Green. He said, Brother Perry, he said, you remember last week when I told you I was so nervous and I was sick? And Brother Green says, yes, I do. He said, Brother Perry, the Lord met me up on the trail and he does like this behind his head. Well, Brother Green's never been to Sabino, so he has no idea what is he talking about. And then he doesn't find out what Brother Branham is talking about until the, the following month when Brother Branham preaches the message on the wings of a snow white dove in Shreveport, Louisiana at Brother Jack Moore Church. In that particular message, Brother Branham talks about how that he was looking out his bedroom window up at the canyon and the Holy Spirit showed him a vision of this little furry animal jumping at Brother Branham. And those of you that know the story, every seven years, Brother Branham was very, very sick. In the 40s, Brother Branham had enough money that he drove up to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he was able to ask the doctors, what is wrong with me? Why do I always get sick? And they could not find out what was wrong with him. He went to Sam Adair, his personal doctor. And Dr. Sam did not know what was wrong with him. He saw a doctor here in Tucson. The doctor could not figure out what was wrong with him. And Brother Batum talks about this on tape. And it always caused him every seven years to be very sick to his stomach. And he couldn't hold his food down. And it would last X amount of time. I don't know how long it would last. It last weeks or months. But then he would, then it would come back again seven years later. In that particular story, Brother Batum talks about how that his mother, when he was younger, had seen a, had a dream of six doves. And the number six is the number of man, not the number of God. And she said, these six doves come flying at him, and they were in the form of the letter S. And so Brother Branham, all these years, had looked for the seventh dove. He said, because six is not completion, it's not a finished number. And so what happened was, is that now the Lord is showing him, you need to go to Sabino because this furry animal that you always see in a vision 
jump in your mouth, run around in your stomach, cause you to be sick. It, now it missed his mouth and in the vision it hit Brother Branham's chest and when it fell, it fell on a cactus. And the voice of the Lord spoke to Brother Branham and said, your enemy is now dead. Brother Branham tells his wife, I'm going to Sabino. He goes up to Sabino Canyon and when he goes up there, he finds on the trail on a choya cactus this furry animal and it's bleeding. He said, visions do not bleed. And so we know that after that, the Lord had done something special for him. Also, Brother Bantam goes back a day later, and when he goes up there, he talks about how he was in a cove-like area. And he said he felt the presence of the Lord, and he jerked his hat off. When he took his hat off of his head, he said there sitting on a rock was a little white dove. And this little white dove, he asked it, he spoke to it and said, what are you doing here? And of course, that's when he got the inspiration that now he saw that seventh dove and now God is confirming to him that he is now healed. Next thing we know that takes place is Brother Branham said, I was hiking up towards Mount Lemmon and I was on my way back and I had my 22 rifle with me. We know it had to be in the summer of 65. On the way back, Brother Branham said, I was very hot, so I took my shirt off. I laid my body, my chest up against a rock, and a voice spoke to me and said, what are you leaning against? And when he pushed himself away from the rock, there written in the rock, he says it like this on tape, was the word White Eagle Quartz. Fortunately, Brother Branham had taken snapshots of these with a 35 millimeter camera. Brother Green, my pastor, did not see these pictures until after Brother Branham passed away. When Brother Branham passed away, Brother Billy Paul was very saddened because of losing his dad. So on around January the 12th, 1966, Brother Green said, where are those photos that Brother Branham took? He got the photos that Brother Branham took, looked at all the photos, and on one of those was the word eagle written in the rock out of white quartz. And so he took and had that photo blown up and that first service on a Wednesday night, they passed this photo so everybody could see this word eagle written on the rock. And Brother Green said, I'm gonna go find it. Brother Green takes Brother Harold McClintock and he finds that rock, which I will tell that story in detail at a later time. So those things that I just re and was in reference to are the, the events that took place in this particular city. Brother Bantam's hiking, favorite hiking spot, we are told by Brother Willard Collins, Brother Billy Paul, and different brothers, that his favorite place to go hiking was in Pima Canyon, which was not too far from where Brother Bantam built the den. One other event that I've already covered with you that we know that took place was, now we're gonna go back to 63, and that's when Brother Bantam was, it was uh, shopping with Sister Mita and that's when he was sitting in the J.C. Penney's at the bottom of the escalator, and there he said these words, here I am in J.C. Penney's back in hell again, when he preached the message, souls that are in prison now. I want to welcome you to Tucson, Arizona. It stretches quite a number of miles from here. As you can see in the behind me here is Santa Catalina Mountains. That's where Pima Canyon is, Finger Rock, and Sabino Canyon. Over here, Across is a smaller mountain peak, and that's called the Hitchcock Peak, or the Agua Caliente Peak. The first letter of that is H for hot water. If you move over to your right, you'll find the Rincon Mountains. If you move over to the right, way in the distance, which you cannot hardly see them, is the Ingram Mountains. When you look to the south here, you'll see a huge mountain range. Those are called the Santa Catalinas. The mountain range that we're in right now is called the Tucson Mountain Range. The Tucson Mountain Range is covering the west part of Tucson, and when you're out in the city and look back this direction, you can see how far they stretch all the way across. When you take the first letter of each of those mountain ranges that I just named spells the name Christ, C-H-R-I-S-T. The Catalinas, the Hitchcock, the Rencons, the Ingrams, Santa Rita's, and the Tucson Mountains. Welcome to Tucson, Arizona. God bless you.